Kyle Martino works for NBCSN, soccer analyst, Premier League, former MLS player. He joins us now. How good is Belgium, Kyle? They're quite an enigma. Um, they're supposed to be the dark horse of this tournament. They have, on paper, a, a I would say a better team than the U.S. and a team that can do damage in this tournament. But they they underwhelmed a little bit through the group phase. Didn't really get out of first year, which sounds like a silly statement based on the fact that they won all of their games. But we haven't seen the best Belgium yet. But but I, I fear that the knockout stage wakes the sleeping giant and. Uh, these guys could really scare because this is the best. This is a golden generation. This is the best Belgian team we've probably seen since the '80s. Uh, Josie Altidore and how Jurgen Klinsmann uses him today. How would you use Altidore? Uh, I think he's going to be used as a as a um, in uniform cheerleader on the sideline. I, I can't imagine, based on the way he went down. And typically, a, a hamstring injury, if it's a severe one, which it looked like it was, is, is, is a month or two to get fully recovered. We don't know how much he's been training. He's been jogging a little bit. So th- this might be a little bit of sort of mind tactics to give Belgium and give Mark Wilmot something to think about with Josie Altidore on the bench. But I'd be shocked to see him in the game. How does this go wrong today? Uh, it goes wrong if the U.S. thinks they can beat Belgium based on the way they performed in, in the group stage and based on things that Jurgen and the players have been saying, they know that, that they can't come out and not protect the ball, uh, not make good, solid decisions defensively. And then there are so many players on this team, on the Belgian side, who play in some of the top uh, clubs in the world in, in, in the Premier League. And if, if you make one mistake, especially in a do-or-die scenario, they've got the guys that can burn you. He's uh, Kyle Martino, NBC Sports Network, uh, covers the Premier League for NBCSN, former MLS player from 2002 through 2007, as the United States takes on Belgium later today in the round of 16 at uh, 4 Eastern. Uh, Kyle's phone's a little uh, muffled there, so uh, we bring him back. The... um, how important is this, though? We, we, we like to have these declarative statements that say this means this for uh, soccer in this country. So the importance of getting moving to the Elite Eight here is what? Oh, it's massive figuring that the U.S. has only done it one time before and interest, uh, Americans like winners, and interest increases exponentially as the team makes it further in this tournament. But if they lose this game, for me, it doesn't discredit the team, doesn't discredit the movement of soccer in this country. And uh, it's the question, is soccer here, is, is just kind of a funny one that I laugh off now. Of course it is. And, you know, there's going to be probably 20 million people watching this game to see the U.S. and get behind them. And if they don't make it through, we won't see a depreciation of soccer like we have in the past after a World Cup in between cycles. But we're looking at what this means, and I and I don't know what it's going to mean for this generation or the next generation or how important soccer is going to be, but I wondered if we kids, will they tuned into golf because of Tiger Woods. Like, Tiger made it cool to watch yeah. golf. It, it used to be your dad's sport. It, do we need to have that superstar that kind of puts us on the same level, a, a LeBron or a Tiger Woods, where kids in the United States aspire to be that player, that person? Sure, and I, and I think we've got a, a, a few of them on this team. I mean, not not the LeBron James, not not the best player in the world, but we've got guys that are recognizable, that are characters, that have played in huge clubs and recognizable places around the world, and you know now are moving into three or four World Cups that they've played in. And uh, you know, as the U.S. grows and making it further and further through the tournament, you start to convert those those fair-weather fans that either say, hey, we don't love it because it's not our game, or B, we're not the best at it. So it's going to take a while to convert those guys down the road anyway. But if, if you're saying, is soccer here based on it, it leapfrogging NFL or NBA, no, soccer's not here, and it's not going to be here for a while. But you know, if you're talking about 60,000 people in Grant Park going nuts and then turning people away two hours before the U.S. game, mm-hmm. yeah, soccer's pretty here, and they don't need to wait for a LeBron James. If we go to a Premier League match, where do we go? I mean, you go, you go to some of the cathedrals. I mean, if you're talking Fenway and you're talking Wrigley, then you're talking Old Trafford, you're talking Anfield. I mean, two, two of the most historic grounds in, in the Premier League. But 
I mean, the, the most amazing part about the, the Premier League, you can go to you can go to Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace in London. You can go to some of these places where most people wouldn't have heard of the team as sort of a sports fan that's not following soccer. But it will feel as important. It will feel as historic as as a Yankee Stadium or or a Wrigley Field. I mean, it, it it's truly something special to go and get a glimpse at this game, sort of where it originated, where it was born, and uh, and and watch what it means to those people over there. Now, before I let you go, I I would love to have thought bubbles with Messi when he's playing. To under- I know, right? To, to we under- that out just to understand how the the creative mind works of what you see, when you see it, how you see it, because it's different than anybody else in the world. And, I mean, he's just wired differently to be able to do that. Gretzky was wired differently. You just see it. You're going to see it a couple of moves ahead of everybody else. Uh, I'm just sort of fascinated with that ability to do something, see something that very few have ever been able to do. I mean, he, he makes me feel like the game I was playing wasn't soccer. And it, <laughs> it's, it's absolutely insane what he can do with a ball on the field. And, and the reason the thought bubble thing is so funny and so accurate and, and, and appropriate is he's such a quiet guy. Normally the superstars are gregarious and outgoing. And the last Argentinian superstar, Diego Maradona, is kind of the guy that, he's, that Messi still is in the shadow of, even though on the field. It's so similar, their qualities, and, and Messi might even actually at times be a little better than Maradona was, but because Maradona was this huge, bigger-than-life character, he will always be the greatest player in Argentina history. So if we can see some of those thought bubbles, maybe we could maybe we could see a little more into what makes this genius mind work because it's absolutely breathtaking. Thank you, Kyle. Good to visit with you again. All right, Dan. Hopefully we got some good news here today. All right, Kyle Martino, NBCSN, covering the Premier League.